G'day everyone, I am live right now on Facebook and this will be uploaded onto YouTube for a later visual and uh, I'm just going to do a demo on a uh, another pouch I'm just trying to update my computer uh, you might hear a bit of movement in the background that's Rebecca just uh, doing some of her orders so say g'day she'll um <laughs> she probably won't respond but anyway <laughs> she's there so this one here I'm going to upload this is a bit of a different shape the one we did yesterday is this shape this one is that shape so it's a little bit shorter on the sides um, and it comes in a little bit differently at the side as well and it is a bit taller so I'm making the bigger one and I've chosen to make it out of this leather which is stunning and um, I can just gonna move this computer up so I can see it a little bit, bit clearer just because uh, the comments disappear so quickly off my phone I can't see them G'day everyone, welcome back and uh, sorry it took me a little bit of time but I was just waiting for Becky to finish doing her bits and making noise. So we're going to make this one. Now I did just get another delivery of this. This is a $12 um, zipper uh, jig and uh, this will help you put your zippers on quite easily if you want to use one of those. So there was a couple of back orders for them. I've already cut out, like I say, the uh, front, the wadding, and the lining. And I have already cut my zipper at 20 inches. And I have also trimmed it so that it has uh, little snips all the way through so I can go around corners. I've also cut two pieces about, oh, about four inches or so, by about a one and a half and uh, they have been already folded into a um, like a bias binding type strip and ready to go on for later. So I'm a little bit more prepared. I also have two zipper um, heads ready to go as well and uh, got my clips. These are the tools you're going to need and uh, we're going to get into doing it. So first things first, once you've cut out your piece, Cut out your wadding a little bit smaller if you can. That would be easier in the seams a little bit later on. Pop your lining aside and we're going to get one side of the zipper. So you open up an open-ended zipper, like a continuous zip. Open it up, face it right side down. Now you can, like I said the other day, you can find the centre of your zip. So you do that, fold it in half. You get those ones and snip a little wedge, just a little wedge out of that. You'll be able to see that nice and easy. Do the same with the other side. So there, snip a little wedge out of it and you'll have that little wedge out of your zipper top. You'll also do that to the top of your pleather okay just grab that little wedge there and to the other side as well i'm just lining up the edges find the center and just take a little snip out of that that'll get you center marks you can also do that to your lining might as well while we're here I'm going to fold it in half, fold it in half again, and snip out that centre at the top, just like that. And that'll give me my little cutout at the top. Okay, so grab one of the zippers, one side, and facing right side down, you see so you want the high side facing down, get your little snip out your little uh, mark out of there and clip that into the center and then just work your way around the zipper maneuvering the, the uh, zipper tape as you go like I say you can use um, uh, 
wash away zipper tape or uh, binding tape or whatever you want to call it. Um, you can use that as well if you like. This is, um, I can't find mine. That's why I keep doing this. <clears throat> Plus, if you don't have it, you'll be sitting there going, well, how am I supposed to clip that on or pin that on? You can't pin it. You have to use clips. Just FYI. I'm just going to make sure that lining is over a little. So it goes off a bit centre. And just get it up there. Want it caught up there as well. Um, good afternoon. Hi, Marlene. Uh, see you in another yes, demo. Good um, excuse to stop during housework. Yeah, I never need an excuse. <laughs> True that. Is there many new people since I've been around? Yeah, there's a few new ones that haven't met you. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> They'll never get to meet me. <laughs> uh, dear. Yeah. So, I mean, let me see out on this stunning face. <laughs> this stunning face? Yeah, they're missing out. Yeah, they get to see your mother's horrible old face. <laughs> All right. Just going to move that up there. Can't be bothered now. You can't be bothered now. Oh, I know got, I need to. You do. do things You've got things to do. Beck's got to go and take some stuff. She sold some. Um, Don't. Oh, it's K pop stuff. Yeah, <laughs> kids stuff. Anyway, she sold some uh, online and now she's got to envelope it and all that sort of jazz. Who is in the background? Christine, that would be my daughter, Rebecca. And uh, my, 20, my oldest, my 21 year old. She used to be a local, not anymore. <laughs> she used to work here with me, drive me nuts. Oh. She used to argue 24-7. <laughs> she now earns a hell of a lot more money. Roustabouting. <laughs> Hi, Bex, everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't seen Becky in ages. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Hi. <laughs> no. How many years? Oh, it has to be, yeah, ages, ages. You'll have to come and do a live with me just for, just for shits and giggles. Shits and giggles, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> uh, Christine Burgess says, hi, Rebecca. Hello. <laughs> and Gidget says, hi, Bex. Hello. <laughs> you probably can't hear. Oh, they might be able to hear. Probably. Yeah. So once you've got them on both ends, okay, I'm going to take that to the machine and I am going to stitch down uh, one-eighth of an inch so that um, it's what our kids do when they know, grow up fast. <laughs> yeah, they do. Hi, Bex says Pat. So I'm going to just take this to the machine. I'll move this. There we go. And I'm going to swap over, put my zipper foot on. And let's put that up there. Swap my needle over into a different position. I want it closer to the edge of the fabric and down. Oh, it's a bit slow because I was stitching something else before. It was I was actually mending. Can you believe actually no, I was taking up pants. Tell me about it. I wasn't mending, I was just taking pants up. That was bad enough. I haven't done that in so long. I'm out of here. Hey? I'm out. You're out? Alright, see you, booze. Don't forget that box. Yeah. Please, what pretty the please. Stuff that I do? Show yeah. me, show me. Oh my gosh. That is a lot. Look, look. Yep, there it is. <laughs> they can see it. Yeah. <laughs> see you, boozy. Bye. Bye. So as you go along here, just stitch it down. Take your time. There's no rush. Um, I will put this up on the um, Facebook group as a free file that you can download as a PDF. Uh, you can enlarge it or shrink it or whatever you want to do. 
to make it different sizes. Same sort of process as the one I did the other day, yesterday I should say. And then we're going to do the other side. You probably haven't stitched in at this point your, um, your wadding, but we'll do that on the next one. It'll stick to the back of the, the pleather because it's got like a, a brushed sort of cottony back to it, which is nice. Nice. And the rain's finally stopped here for well for a day or so I suppose until next time. Hope everyone else is kept safe. It's been pretty crazy the storms and everything. first lot around is just to hold that zipper in until we put the lining in with it and then we'll top stitch it down and it's such a quick project it really is once you've got it I think the longest amount of time is um, besides putting in the zip is probably cutting out your pieces and uh, after that it just comes together really really quickly get to back stitch because it does take a bit of pressure zips do so we'll take that off and love the clips bag uh, uh, is there a pattern please Karen I did a free video on that one that is definitely up on YouTube I think I shared that um, the other day Karen yeah yeah so there's definitely a video on that one and I think I actually put in from memory the measurements that I used as well into the description from memory don't count me on that one. <laughs> you know what i'm like <laughs> so uh grab the center notch and line it up with the other notch on the front like that and you can do it on the other side and we are just going to clip that in place all the way around we don't need as many now because the zip's in place so you just need a few just to hang on to it while you go around and I will move my needle so the needle is on the left hand side of the zipper foot so it is closer to the zipper in this next step so you do that to both sides I really enjoyed making these I really really did I liked it and one of the bags I put the pleather on the inside so um, this one here I've got to batik on the outside g'day Tanya and on the inside I put the pleather so that it was waterproofy on the inside I know you know you're putting toothbrush and stuff like that I thought that would be uh, handy too and pretty you know I mean the pleather can be pretty too but a little bit more decorative on the outside if you do want to embroider these or anything like that you can do that on your embroidery machine before you start once you've got it actually pieced together like this it does make it extremely difficult obviously you can hand embroider or machine embroider if it was me I'd be machine embroidering because just you know I'm too lazy to do hand embroidery these days so as much as I appreciate it I would um, yeah be handballing that off to mum because mum mum loves doing hand embroidery as you can tell with her beautiful work so got them pinned up nice and quick and we are going to there's that little pouch I made for the for the clips cute hey and I'm going to sew this down and move my needle across all the way across and we'll bring you back over I like is this like it is very much like the other one just a different shape all right 
Now the thread I'm using on the top is literally one of those cheap polyester threads. I think it's 40 weight or 50, I think it's 50, 40 weight. I think it's 40 weight. Um, cheap polyester thread and in the bobbin I am using a deco bob. So a pre-wound pre deco bob, which I do love to use, as you know, because it avoids all tension issues. So just tick along nice and steady. There's no race. coming there we go if you see any creases catch them before you sew them uh, you can always snip out a little bit of your lining if you've made your lining too big or you know that sort of thing that's no big deal like this lining here it's no big deal it'll it'll just go in the mix um, like it's, it's a little bit here I can snip that out up to there and um, it just goes away and we'll do the other side same, same. And around we go. Speed her up a little. Okey-dokey. So we've got both of those done. G'day. Hello, uh, Lynn, I should say. Hello, Lynn. Um, and I'm going to just move this camera back, okay, to do the next step. Okay, so what you'll see is sometimes they don't quite line up. The, the front will be a little bit different. Don't stress about that stuff. That's the little things. So pop your hand in there. And if you've backstitched here, you won't have to worry about those stitches having a bit of pressure. And coming undone and turn it right way around okay pop your hand in and really push that out with your fingers that seam it's going to be a little bit of bulk in there because we've got zipper we've got wadding and we've got faux leather and lining Okay, so then what I do is I grab these clips again and just with my fingers, I sort of push them down a little. Now, if you don't want to struggle with the faux leather underneath your foot, then you will need to make sure that you sew with a faux leather downwards and you'll be sewing upside down. Um, if you have a nylon foot, um, yeah, Teflon foot, I should say, nylon, Teflon. Anyway, if you have one of those feet, uh, you can then do it or you can do what I did yesterday. It's still a little bit of a struggle, but you can put tape underneath the foot. I'm thinking of using a walking foot because it might actually make it a little bit easier. And 
just clip it all the way around. You cannot pin with pins, all right, because it's faux leather. Once you put a hole in it, that is it. That hole is there for good. Looking over here. So do both sides and we're going to top stitch. And just make sure your faux leather is away from your zip. And this will help keep that all stitched down and out of your way. Because you don't want it getting caught and you don't want the lining getting caught while you're opening and closing the zipper. Nothing worse. Ever had that? I have. It's very annoying. Very annoying. G'day Faye. Hi Michelle. Have the panels been sent out? Lynn Marshall. Um, I think so. I'd have to go and check. I know that Sandra did a whole heap before Christmas. So if it was paid for, it would be sent out. Okay. Um, all right. So ready? So if I put it this way in the machine, the foot's going to have a bit of a struggle. If I go that way, I'm going to have the bobbin, which is black, on this side. But I really want that brownie sort of colour on the top. So I'm going to try and go this way so I can sort of see a bit better. I'm going to swap over my feet to a um, walking foot and see if that helps the process a little it might, it might not. It's sort of um, test and trial and trial and error. Uh, if you're going to use a walking foot, you are going to need to move the needle over, right over. And I mean right over to the right hand side so that you can get as close as you can because you really only want to come at one eighth of an inch from the edge of the faux leather. Okay. You see walking foot stitching thanks christine <laughs> okay we'll give it we'll give it a burl honey all right let's move this over got the walking foot on i'm going to move it right over as far as it'll go and i'm going to put the stitch up to number four and popping that under there i'll be doing that get under I'm putting, um, you know the walking foot has that little bit that walk steps up and down. I'm putting that on the actual zipper itself. I'm going to slow it down so I can see what I'm doing. And guess what? She workies. So it works, guys. You can do this at home on your domestic machine. I'm using a Janome. Skyline S6 um, right now and it works. I mean, it's always lovely to have an industrial machine. Not everyone can have one. I do have one, but I do like to do these on a domestic as well so that, you know, I know comfortably I can say you can do this at home on your machine without any drama. So it is going to stitch that down all the way around until I come off and double back tack. Okay, trim that off, pop the clips away, your gorgeous little clip container. I use walking foot with no problem. Yeah, there you go, see? Nicely stitched at the top. Beautiful. Let's do the other side. I have used sometimes the clear, not the clear, the um, yeah, the, the ones that are a little bit more tacky, they've got a little bit more tack to them. This one's not so tacky. Sometimes they can be a bit of a pain in the proverbial, but um, this one's working just fine. So I'm happy to advise you to use a walking foot. My oath. Like I say, just take it steady. You shouldn't have to lift and turn. It's a big enough uh, arch in it that you can actually just manoeuvre it around without having to lift and turn your foot all the time. And 
like I say, if you put that little bit that does the walking on that walking foot on the black part or the part of the zipper, it sort of keeps that stitch reasonably even all the way around, like the, the width from the edge of the, the faux leather. Oops, cut off. There we go. Okay, so we are done there. All the way around. Yeah, and that is using that cheap thread, which I keep using, and it's been great. I've actually run out of, like, I've used full colours, like the whole thing of a full colour. It's been great. So now we've got that. It's your lining. That's your front, your back, or whichever way you like it. Now we need to put that dreaded zipper on. Now, I did do the other one without one of these. I'm going to show you how to use one. I'll use my walking foot. No problem. Fantastic, says Christine. Great. Interesting. So, yep. Okay. Cool. Caught up on the comments. So this one here, normally you would glue it down. It's got adhesive on the back like that. Okay. And you're on the table. So it's really sticky. So all I'm going to do is fold that back a little just to give it a bit of, stop it from moving. Now, off. A little bit more. Because I want to be able to move this from this position. I don't want it staying in this position. There. Yeah. Okay. Now, you get your zipper head and you place that, that bit there that holds a little um, trinket, you place that in between the groove here. Okay. I'm going to zoom that down and in. Okay. So you place that and you place that with the rounded part of the zipper, the flat part facing towards you and the rounded part away from you. So put the little thing there and just push that down like that. Just wedge it in a little. Now turn the zipper so it is right way away from you. So the zipper is now upside down, one speed flat out. <laughs> And what you need to do is place those in. I don't know if you can see this because it's, you know, upside down and back to front. Place them in and push down. Push down, push down, push down. Just like that. And look. Okay, now it's on. Push that out. And it is on. Just like that. Then we're going to do the other side. So we do it again. So you grab that little fella for the little girl, the curved edge away from you, put that little um, piece that holds the trinket in there and just give it a bit of a shove down so it holds it, wedges it in. Make sure that before you do this too, that your zippers, and I did this before we started, that your zippers are even. And upside down, so the right side of the zipper is facing away from you. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. There we go. Place them so they go in at the same time. And just give them a little shove, a bit of a nudge, just like that. See? Take that out. Oops. And hold on to the end. And you got another one. So if I turn that right sides out, I don't want them to come off. I will have two zippers up like that. See? But we want it inside out. G'day, Cherie. Um, so we can turn it inside out. Just be careful that you don't undo your zippers. I mean, you can easily put them back on, but it's annoying. And have it inside out. So your, your right side of your bag is facing, is inside, and your outside is on facing you. Okay, so we've got it inside out. Now I'm going to lift that. I'm going to fold that back up there. I'm going to zoom back out, because you don't need to be zoomed in. And we're going to do the bottom. Now, pull your zip up out of the way. And take that bottom corner there and that bottom corner and put your fingers in there 
and pull them across. Get your lining down so that they run across and across like that. Make sure that your pleather is not all creased up under there. Best way to do that is to put a couple of clips. If your pleather is not meeting up 100% like exactly where it should go, don't stress. Get it to meet the best you can so the zipper is sitting in the centre. Okay. So that pinch it. And a couple of clips just to hold that end while I fiddle with the other end. And again, we do the same thing. I put my hand in there first, line it up, and then I pinch down. And you can see, pinch, pinch. It's a little bit easier to see on this one. I'm going to trim off the excess. I put one there. I'm going to start with this side, and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch from the edge of that, that there. Not this, that. All right, because I don't want. A hole in the bottom of my bag so let's bring you over here and pop it down here you got to squish that side down so you can see <laughs> all right now still got my walking foot on so it should just naturally want to go over the top back stitch at the start and end all right and with your hand whole fingers hold that down Really hold that down. You don't, and over this, when you go over the zip, go back and forwards a couple of times. I'm actually going to, because that's on the number four zip, so stitch. So I'm going to cut that off. I've got to put my zip number down. Hang on. Go back and do that again because I forgot to put my top stitch off. I'm going to go up over here. Make sure your stitch is uh, at number 2 or 2.4 or whatever. And then with this one, pinch that down so you don't lose it. And back stitch. I've got a thread caught by the looks. There we go. Cut that off. And you should have that stitched across there like that and then we do the same to the other side looks like the you the Facebook videos um, doing some glitching I hope it doesn't keep doing that just make sure I can see where my leather is underneath and I'm catching all all the layers Back tack over the zipper. It gets a lot of work. I'm just looking at that. I don't know if I've got. Yep. I'm just going to cut that off a second. In two secs. Just make sure that it's catching what it should be catching. Sometimes when you've got really thick seams and stuff, it might miss a stitch. It looks like it's missed all those. Make sure it hasn't. I want to be able to say I've stitched it and not pretended to stitch it. No, something's not threaded in right. stitch so I'm thinking something's come unthreaded so bear with me while I re-thread the machine I don't know about anyone else but whenever I have anything go anywhere near wrong I always go back to the basics I re-thread first and then come back and try again let's see what this is going to do Tell. 
No, it's not catching. Already got caught somewhere. Sorry, guys. It's always inevitable, isn't it? It's going to happen when I'm doing a live. Always. Let's just see what it's doing. No, it's not even catching, so. Making a noise. All right. Don't like that noise. Oh, she's a bit hairy in there. What's going on? Someone would think that I might clean out my machine. Try again. Had a troubleshoot machine. Right. We're going through everything, foot down. Yeah. Okay. I'm not too sure what it's doing, but we'll try again. I'll just try in a normal bit of something. Uh, let's see if it will switch on that. Yep, okay, let's try again. Gotta love it when it goes wrong, don't you? Alrighty, one more time. I might start in a little bit, see if that helps. Yeah. No. wonder if it's, uh, shouldn't be anything other than Shouldn't be an issue. I did the other side, all right, and it's going on there. Don't know why. I'll try past the zip, see if that makes a difference. I might bring up the bobbin. Let's see if I can hang on to both and see what it does. Okay, so it's not catching the bobbin. So that tells me I've got a bend or something in my needle. So I'm going to quickly change that. I've only just put a new one in, but I did sew some stuff. Got to have a bend in it to do that. It's not picking up the bobbin. There's got to be something going on. Let's try now. All right. I've now got a permanent crease in it now, so I don't even need clips. No, it's still not picking up. Always the way. No. It is so not picking up that thread. Not picking up me bobbin. It's going to make me yell and scream. See if it's that bobbin. That thread's a bit bright. I don't know if it'll work. Thread's a bit out there, I think. Let's 
see if this will maybe it's the bobbin try that bright pink be able to see that one Nope. Picked up a little bit and then it went, no, nope, not doing it. I don't know, Donkey. I don't know. Working perfectly fine one minute and then decided to crack the pookies the next. Um, let's turn it in the middle. Shouldn't be an issue. Down there, up there, around there, around there, and around there. Shut that in there. Thread the needle. That was threaded correctly. Come on, baby girl. You can do it. So. Will you pick up the bobbin? Yes, you will. Okay. If you pick up the bobbin, you should pick up now. why but it's now stitched to within an inch of its life <laughs> yeah I think um, it's just I think I don't know whether it was the bobbin or what it was but anyway perseverance has fixed that now I've got about 6,000 threads and a bright orange a bright pink thread in there but anyway blind man would love to see it wouldn't he let's swap back over to the other one right where'd I put you there Shouldn't have been an issue. It's been using it for ages. Come on, edge come. Down, pick up the bobbin. All right, let's see if that makes a diff. Okay, we got it. All right, purple tip now. Yeah, I've got a... a um, a uh, size 90 in there should be fine. Uh, retreat, re thread the machine, yeah, done all those things. I did everything, of course. You know, you never know. So <laughs> sometimes machines just don't want to do what they're supposed to do. Uh, I al always think it's an operator error, so it's something I've done, but I literally didn't do anything between one point of the demo to the other, so mm -mm, don't know. Um, before I cut anything off, I'm just going to double check I caught all those seams just because I had that little issue. Um, good. Okay. Okay, doke. So now we can trim off this excess and um, you can cut it back to a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to cut with this. Back to a quarter of an inch, and then that zipper. Whoops, it is. Cut that off. Isn't it nice to know that you're not the only one who has issues with their machine when they're sewing? And it always happens to me when I'm on a live. <laughs> always, ever. Try this one there. That'll go through it. Always and forever. Okay, so that's all good. They're both caught. And now we use these little pieces. So get this little one of these little pieces. And you want to clip it to the bottom raw edge where you trimmed. You're going to turn it over. And you're going to stitch on that line. We're going to try again to stitch on that line, see what happens. 
um, and do the same to the other side. So clip it down. It'll be a bit longer than the piece, which is perfectly fine. And the reason why I turn it over is so I don't make a new seam. I just want to stitch on the same seam. So I'm going to literally sew from this side again. Might clip them to the edge because I don't want them folding up on me. Probably grab that one there. Just to keep them out of the way until I'm ready to sew them. All right, so we're going to sew across that line again. Um, it happens to the best of the does, Marlene. <laughs> normally, uh, it happens, oh, normally happens to good people. <laughs> That's how I work that. Let's see if she'll stitch with this bobbin in. <laughs> I'm going to start in a little needle down. And I'm going to a couple of stitches and go back. And I'm going to slow it down. Sounds like it's stitching. So fingers crossed it's stitching. And get to the end. And don't forget to back tack. Yeah, it's definitely stitching. Very good. I don't know what made it do its little spaz attack before, but it did. <sighs> anyway, so trim those hairy bits off. You've got to get rid of your hairy bits. Do the other side while you've got it there. Oops, guys. There she goes. And back to back stitch. Okay, cut off your hairy bits. Well, it's sewing. It's all good. Um, where did you get my 15,000 fixed again? Can't lower the press of foot. Holy mackerel. That's not good. Um, then flip it over. I've got a little bit of hot pink there. Should be right. That's great. Uh, flip it over and that little ironed pressed bit there you want to turn that over if you can't reach your previous stitch trim a little bit more off the uh, leather in there not too much you can go down to one eighth just to give you some room or make yourself a new piece that's that's um, wider so pull it down over to cover just like that. And then the next one. And we're going to stitch from this side this time. Oh, hang on before I do that. Get those side bits in, guys. Side bits in. And then down. It's a little bit fiddly. Side bit there, what's up? Oh, get in there. Probably cut these a little bit smaller than the one I did yesterday, but um, it works just the same. As soon as you can, get a clip on it, hold it down. Do the other side. Get that side bit in. Hold that over. And tuck in any raw edge bits. Fold her over. Another clip. Hope you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh, you lost him. Okay. And then fold that up. I find it easier to put my foot on it, <laughs> hold it down, whoops it goes, there we go, and 
and there you go there. Okay. I'm just going to use my little um, needle in the down position, my little um, screwdriver because it's just handy and take a couple of stitches and back and stitch one eighth from the edge. If you've got a um, purple fang that'll do the same thing or a pair of tweezers. It's just a little bit hairy at this point. Same here, went with brother, lovely machine. Yeah, I, I actually really love my, I've got 14,000, really love it. Um, but when things go wrong in any of these, really, that's why I love my, my Jack, because it, it, things just don't go wrong. And if they do, they're such a simple this, like, you know, way of fixing them. Um, because it's all simple. Anyway, so stitch that back, back and forward, and trim up your bits. Trim, trim, trim. Get your hairy bits. All good. And that has it covered, and then we're going to do the same on the other side. So we'll have a little fight with it. Turn that over. Finger press it in between your fingers and then double fold it over. Get a clip in there and do the other side. It is easier if you give yourself a little bit more room. I really didn't quite give myself enough room. Um, you can always trim off the side if it's too big, but it's, you know, if it's not big enough, it's like, you know, testy painful so I'm just going to use the screwdriver to push that under and like I said while I'm sewing I'll use the screwdriver to, to push it down and push it forward so that the needle catches and covers that um, seam up I want the idea is to cover up the seam you've already got there um, if you can So you can put your needle in the down position before you put your foot down and just hold on to it. And use your little awl or whatever you're using just to manipulate that fabric to go over that seam. What's going on with everything today? Yeah, so I'm thinking of setting up my 14,000 just for embroidery because I've got this fella now and I've got the jack for the industrial stuff. All right, so that one's done as well. Not as neat as the other side, but still done. Cute, hey? So just trim off your hairs, little bits of uh, thread. They're all covered. Put your clips back. Put them over there. Oh, drop your bobbin on the floor. Oh, that's what we do. That's how we roll here. Uh, no worries, Judy. All right, so once you've got that, you can now turn it right way around. Put that down like that. Flap your zip. Flap your zip. And she's done. Look at that. It's another cute one. Now see how that's more of that shape? This one, the one I did yesterday, is a lower and wider shape. Different, different size, different shape altogether. Well, not altogether, but 
you can see it's not as tall so this one's got a higher peak on it so I'll um, I'm using now at the moment Beverly I'm just using my S6 a Skyline S6 so it's a Janumi so that one is done ready to go I think that might be on the next live I think a couple of these might be on the next live maybe I do need some for demos um, I do have plenty of fabric left and I was thinking of making another one in this color um, I want to move said that's a really project in the mail yeah okay um anyway so yeah so that color i do like um and i was wondering whether you could actually make one in a couple of different colors and i think you could that middle section you could actually add seams to add a different color so you've got a different color base but it will add extra seams in here the green one is cute yeah and i'm thinking of doing one in a smaller size uh, in this shape in the green color so i'm thinking that might be the way to go the other thing I was thinking of doing was, um, now I can't think, oh, a little, um, I, I seen it the other day, a little little zipper thing that you can just put into your purse, a nice little, um, you know, for, for something small as well. Um, I know I did the little bags, but this is one that just slips into your handbag um, and it's got a front zipper, but it's sort of folded over and the zipper's one third down from the top or, yeah one quarter down from the top but anyway so that's sort of what I was thinking of doing so that's those little fellas little pouches and um, I'll pop that uh, free download PDF up for you when uh, I get offline and it will be in the group and I will um, put a link in uh, for YouTube too so it should be there um, need to get some when you do your live sales in the new year yes the, the embossed pleather is just to die for really really pretty the light blue one you should see the light blue one it's gorgeous and it's there that's just fabric obviously but yeah i thought they were quite clever and quite cute and um i liked them but you know there you go they are cutesy so i thought free pattern and uh you get a free video and a free pattern and, and off you go you can make a huge amount of them same with these little fellas i did free free download um, or free pattern with all the details to make one of these as well so that is there on YouTube too so you can do that with lining or you don't have to have lining but um, I did it with lining and it holds on my little clippies there you go alrighty so I will catch you guys later don't forget if you want one of these it's the zipper jig they are $12 and they do adhere really, really well. As you can see, I only use that tiny little bit and it's plenty of tack left on that baby. Um, there are a couple of back orders for it. Um, I will be doing a video on the, um, uh, the, the quilt that I did with the green and the pinks. I do have three kits of them and I think it worked out to 81 and there will be a free video that you can actually go to and... Um, uh, give, be given all the um, instructions on how to do it so I'll go through that more when we do our next live so all right guys thanks again catch you soon I might even get another one in by the end of the day if not tomorrow well alrighty <laughs> see ya